Cyclings, a name few on Tamriel know, and those who have heard it think of legend and tales to scare the children to keep them out of the forests during the winters. Only a solitary few on Solstheim truly know the pesky little snowlings that the name belongs to. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Camel, but more importantly, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Lore series, a series in which we have a more in-depth look at the intricacies of the Elder Scrolls to help us better understand the universe we so love. Today we will be focusing our gaze upon the Reiklings or Reeklings as both pronunciations are used within the game. A race we have seen in both the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind's Blood Moon expansion and in the Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim's Dragonborn DLC. If lore does tickle your fancy, links to my other Elder Scrolls lore videos can be found down in the description along with links to all of my social media. Be sure to give them a click after this video. So the Reiklings, they are a curious bunch of little creatures within the Elder Scrolls universe. Famously and familiarly, the Reiklings inhabit Solstheim. However, they were also once known to inhabit the northern regions of Skyrim, but as the influence of man grew and the early ages turned into the later eras, they became banished to folklore within modern day Tamriel. Sadly, now the only place they call home is Solstheim, a moderately sized island found to the northeast of Skyrim. The location of both the aforementioned Elder Scrolls III Morrowind's Blood Moon expansion and the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Dragon Ball DLC. Luckily, those two grand excursions to the island of Solstheim have given us great insight into these petite nomadic tribesmen, or tribes creatures to be more precise, although their exact genetic background is a little blurred. Reiklings are squat, small creatures with skin that boasts an icy blue hue. Their mouths are equipped with sharp teeth and their heads are adorned with pointy ears. Quite a unique bunch of pygmy-like entities, but where did they come from? Sadly, the origins of the Reiklings is a mystery to the people of Tamriel, although there is a logical connection we can make to another race of Tamriel, which we will get to shortly. The native Nord tribesmen of Solstheim, the Skull, believe the Reiklings to be descendants of the Snow Elves. The same way we find Thalma as a bastardized shadow of their former Snow Elf ancestors, well the Skull consider the Reiklings to be the exact same thing. Due to the Thalma's poisoning by the Dwemer, they mutated. The Skull just believed that the Reiklings mutated a little bit differently into little squashling ankle biters we now know as Reiklings. These beliefs, however, are backed by no scientific evidence and are nothing more than folklore created by the Skull villagers and elder folk. It might be true, but there is nothing to back it. However, the lectern-leaning Imperial scholars consider the Reiklings to be nothing more than ice goblins. This is likely exactly where the Reiklings came from. Goblins. Culturally, physically, characteristically, they share the most similarities and traits with the goblins. Also, during the events of the Elder Scrolls Online, which is set roughly 950 years before the events of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, we can find the ice biter tribe of Rankling living within Cragwallow Cave, found nestled within ice wind peaks in Eastmarch on mainland Skyrim. This tribe of Reikling actually looks identical to the goblins that are found within the Elder Scrolls Online. The only difference, however, is their blue skin. It's likely that their numbers dwindled and the surviving Reiklings were pushed further and further north until all that remained were on Solstheim. They likely evolved to better suit their harsh, frostbitten home, becoming shorter and more wily within the snow-laden wilderness, changing over time from their goblin-like cousins on Tamriel to the small creatures we know today as Reiklings. While that has not been confirmed by anything, that is the most logical deduction of the information provided within the games. We have further evidence of their supposed goblin lineage, as once the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim was complete, Bethesda Game Studios has what they call a Game Jam. This is where everyone in the studio gets to do whatever they want for one week. Todd Howard showcased the results of this Game Jam at 2012's DICE Awards, and one thing in that video was goblins. Green goblins. 
Green goblins that look identical to the Reichlings that we find in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's DLC Dragonborn. That's because Bethesda Game Studios took the goblin model that they had made during the game jam and simply recolored them to blue to make them Reichlings. Just like Zenimax Online Studios did two years later with their goblins, recolouring their skin to blue and calling them Reichlings. So their origin is still technically unconfirmed, but anyone who can add two and two will come to the conclusion they are goblin kin. As we discovered no more than a minute ago in the Elder Scrolls Online, the Ice Spider tribe of Reichling is found within Cragwallow Cave. Well, 950 years later in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, we can go and visit this very cave, now called Cragwallow Slopes. Sadly, there are literally zero signs of the Reichlings once living within this cave. So it goes to show that the Reichlings could have been spread all across Skyrim and there would be no remnants of their culture, which makes piecing together their history and presence on Tamriel nigh on impossible. Just like the goblins though, the Reichlings are aggressive and particularly ferocious for their size. While they do have some cute attributes, like their goofy little moustaches, I know I'm the pot calling the kettle black, the funny noises they make, and their ever so charming language. <laughs> However, when in groups, they can prove to be a very dangerous and overwhelming gang that can kill much larger and more powerful opponents than themselves. Reichlings are also notable for taming and mounting tusked bristlebacks, using them as their battle steeds, as they are the perfect size. However, However, unlike a horse, a tusked bristleback will also gore you with their tusks during combat, and can prove to be as battle worthy as their riders. Now despite being considered as nothing more than beasts by the local Nords, the Reichlings are naturally cunning. They are noted for using this cunning, their bristleback mounts, a swarming technique and an array of weapons to mark their place in Solstheim's chain of command. Wielding spears and lances, crude blades, shields and axes in combat. However, they are particularly fond of throwing spears. And if they are so lucky to get their little blue hands on arrows, they will also throw these at their enemies. The little buggers will hide in snow piles and barrels. They will then pop out and attack, startling their foes, having the element of surprise. Reichlings are not a bunch one wishes to find themselves facing, nor does one want to find themselves skulking through their camps, as they are known to set up traps in their settlements, crippling or killing trespassers. Their little villages are usually within caves or ancient ruins, Nordic or Dwemer. Rarely do the Reichlings make themselves at home outside, although this has been known to happen. You can usually tell where a Reichling settlement is before you even see a Reichling, as most objects and surroundings are covered in their culturally unique symbols. What these symbols mean though, now that's a mystery. Their settlements and stages within cultural progression, which are comparable to Stone Age societies, give us insight into their level of intelligence. Using basic wooden stone tools to build simple wooden huts, walls, bridges and watchtowers, they do use some metals on some of their weapons, for example, but these have always been scavenged and not forged by the Reichlings themselves. The Reichlings live in a tribally structured society where members hold specific positions within the village and perform specific tasks, such as hunters, scouts and warriors. Strength is highly respected and oftentimes the strongest member of a tribe will assume the position of chieftain. A succession is often determined by a fight to the death, the victor gaining or maintaining the position of tribal chieftain. This element of Reichling society and its demographics classing system bears parallels with Orzma culture. Orzmas are of course the orcs for the layman. However, uniquely, even non-Reichlings can gain the position of chieftain, as we see in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim's Dragonborn DLC, in which the chieftain of the Thursk Mead Hall actually recognizes the Dragonborn as a stronger leader than himself, and actually insists that the Dragonborn kill him so that the player character is crowned Chieftain. Strong, always fight strong, old Chief strong, me stronger, you stronger, fight me. No. Ch 
choosing to be killed to make way for a stronger leader to rule his tribe, the ultimate sacrifice, but one that is commonplace in Reichling society. However, if something like this does happen, the other tribes will not recognize the outsider as chief and will still attack on sight. Speaking of strange cultural attributes, it would appear Reichlings are some kind of hoarders. I suppose on a remote frozen island where resources are scarce, it makes sense to keep all of the items one comes across. However, the Reichlings seem to forge odd relationships and connections to otherwise inanimate objects. While they have little interaction with the other races, many items find their way to Solstheim via the coastline. The Reichlings collect these and treat them as relics, often decorating their villages with them or seemingly enshrining their new treasures. Evidence of this obscure custom is found in numbers throughout their settlements. One of the Reichlings' favourite treats to find washed ashore or to loot from raided enemies is a little something they call Dizzy Drink. This is what they call it anyway, of course it is alcohol. These little fellas like to get their booze on and stumble around the frost-bitten kingdom of Solstheim. And let me tell you, they're all angry drunks. Something a little less clear-cut though, is their religion. Sadly, only fragments and isolated characteristics of the Reichling religion can be found as clues throughout our time with them on Solstheim. Building shrines out of, or even perhaps dedicated to, random objects and items. If one is sneaky enough, they may even get a peek into the Reichling's ritualistic performance towards these items. This particular example is actually a Santa Claus Easter egg, which I did cover in my Dragonborn DLC Easter egg video. But nonetheless, it's in the game, therefore it's canon. It gives us insight into these odd little creatures. They also have a prayer or a ritual known as the Godspeak Dance. A verse from the Godspeak song goes as follows. Excuse my accent. Hawala faraka ba rakihu kalu puja kan faru kija gura gura gura. A piece that is clearly at the forefront of lyrical structuring. Despite all of this, there are actually no solid understandings of the Reichling religion, and there has been no observed religious leaders within their tribes, not even so much as a shaman. So who or what they worship, we really don't know. However, if the Reichlings are anything like their goblin cousins, they may worship a god known as Moloch who is thought to be an extension of the Ozima god Morlock, who is an aspect of the Daedric Prince Malekath. However, this has no basis in confirmed information, merely speculation building off of the conclusion that Reichlings are cousins of the goblins. Apart from that, who are the Reichlings worshipping? We don't know. Let's just say it's me. Some of them, however, have succumbed to the influence of Mirak the first dragonborn, just as we see the human and elf population of Solstheim doing, being brainwashed and worshipping this ancient being. At the Beast Stone, we can even find a group of Reichling reciting Mirak's mantra in their native tongue. <laughs> A strange sight and sound indeed. As we've mentioned at several points already, Reichlings also have their own language, which I must admit is wholesomely charming. It's cute, onomatopoeic, and somehow harsh yet fluffy and really fun to replicate. <laughs> There is no given name for this language, as no scholars have named it as of yet, so it remains very basically labelled as Reichling language. Now, there have actually been some instances of Reichlings learning the common tongue, or to be specific, Cyrodiilic. While we won't go through the entire interaction, we can experience an example of this during the Dragonborn DLC while talking to the Reichling chieftain of the Thursk Mead Hall. Perfect. you follow. Me, you, you strong, help tribe kin, chief, smart, most likely dumb, but 
Chief Smart. We family, we strong, you stronger. Bilkemak, run. Prize beast, run. Full tribe keep chase away. Bilkemak, fear. You bring he follow you. Yes. Bilkemak, prize beast, you find he follow. Bilkemak, love meat, give meat, he follow. You go. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to understand, but with a combination of a bastardized common tongue, noises, and vocal gestures, we can piece together what the little whippersnapper is trying to say. As far as we know, this is the only Rankling to have progressed his Cyrodiilic to a point where he can communicate with other folk who speak the common tongue. Although despite his efforts, it's hardly intelligible. There is also evidence of Rankling's learning to read Cyrodiilic, or again, the common tongue. While I do believe it's purely an Easter egg, again, it's in the games, therefore it's canon, there is a tent filled with copies of the lusty Argonian Maid, which is a rather saucy and steamy adult novel within the Elder Scrolls universe. And given that the lusty Argonian Maid is not a picture book, which is very unfortunate, it would not be unreasonable to take this finding as evidence that Reichlings have learned to read. Not only that, but they have excellent taste. So what do the Reichlings get up to in their free time? Well, apart from worshipping random objects, they raise tossed bristlebacks for both their use as mounts and also a source of meat. They hunt wolves from the local bosques and snowy fields using their fur and leather for armour and their meat for consumption. Apparently, Ranklings even terrorise the local wildlife, as they have been observed tormenting spriggans of the nearby woods. Historically, the Reichlings have had an ongoing conflict with the local Nords, particularly the Skull Villagers. While they will also fend off any intruders that dare enter their camps and territories uninvited, the persistent raids and battles against the Skull are definitely their most important conflicts to date. However, more interestingly, during the end of the Third Era, which is roughly just over 200 years before the events of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and its Dragon Ball DLC, the Reichlings were employed by the frost giant known as Karstag, he used them as guards for his frost-bitten fortress known as Castle Karstag. During the 427th year of the Third Era, Karstag was taken by werewolves to participate in her scene's hunt as prey. Thrown into the werewolf swarming labyrinth beneath the ice of Mortrag Glacier, Karstag fought his way to the central chamber, where he was killed by the Nerevarine. In their master's absence, the Racklings took charge of Castle Karstag, while unaware that their master Karstag would never return. A Rankling named Dulk took control of the castle and decided to enlist the help of Gralz to keep the citadel up to scratch and secure. Unfortunately, the Gralds turned hostile and slew many of the Racklings in cold blood, leaving them in worse than decimated numbers. Fortunately, a Rankling named Krish was helped by the Nerevarine in clearing the castle of Gralds, restoring control of Castle Karstag to the Reichlings. 200 years after these events, the fortress remains hardly standing, but still under the control of these Reichlings who have held their ground and rightfully hold the castle. And I do hope that they remain to thrive on Northern Solstheim, as that is all we know about the Reichlings, their culture, religion, and history. I feel we'll never see these guys in game again, as we've already had Solstheim as a DLC location twice, so I really doubt we'll ever go back there. The only way we could see Ranklings again is if we go somewhere else that they live, and at this point we do not know if they live anywhere else. So sadly, yeah, it probably is the last time we'll ever see the Ranklings in an Elder Scrolls game. So I do hope that you have enjoyed the Racklings and their culture. Equally so, I do hope that you have learnt something new about the beautifully mad universe that these wonderful games take place in, the Elder Scrolls. But most importantly of all, what do you think about Reichlings? Do you think we'll ever see them again? Are they intellectual goblin kin with a beautiful culture, or are they sub-elf Falma mutations who live as barbarians? Be sure to let me know your thoughts on Reichlings and what you would like me to cover in the Elder Scrolls lore series. 
If you enjoyed this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like, share it with all of your friends, leave a comment with your Elder Scrolls lore video ideas and your thoughts on these little squat fellows we know as Reiklings or Reeklings. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know that people enjoy this kind of content and will result in more of these type of videos. My other Elder Scrolls lore video links can be found in the description. Down there are also links to my social media. Be sure to check them all out. And if you'd like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is genuinely most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen, thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.